when you come here, it's not about you. It's about the person who worked very hard preparing a speech. And that's what we're going to focus on later today. To help someone improve their speaking skills, we need to know why they want to learn to speak better. I love this quote. Never give a speech unless you want to change the world, right? But why do people want to learn to speak? Maybe they want to gain skills. Maybe they don't talk in front of an audience, but they do want to be ready just in case. Maybe they want to raise their self-esteem, they want to grow. Maybe they have a job and they have to speak in front of an audience. And they need to really prepare for that. How many of you are in that case? How many of you have to speak at work? There you go. Maybe they want to gain acceptance from others. A lot of non-native speakers will join Toastmasters. They want to improve their communication skills and have acceptance. This was my case a few years ago. When you evaluate someone, you want to consider, if possible, within our club, since we all know each other, why do they want to learn to speak better? Because then you can customize your evaluation to their specific. How speakers improve. It's a vast topic, but this is what Toastmasters want to remind everybody. This is your responsibility. It is a speaker's responsibility to improve. The evaluator is going to give a lot of feedback, and it's up to you to decide whether you want to incorporate those feedbacks in your growth, in your skills, or just push them aside. It's up to you to put in the work. The Toastmaster membership is actually very low fee. We pay with our sweat and labor, right? This is how we grow. Self-esteem and growth. So consider this. First of all, you need to have a certain level of self-esteem if you want to tackle a challenge. Otherwise, you stay home. So all of you already have a pretty good level of self-esteem to be here tonight. Then you're going to receive feedback. And you're going to consider, do I include this in my growth? Do I include this in my skills? And you're going to develop more self-esteem. That self-esteem, that tackling those evaluators, um, that, that feedback is going to help you grow even more. It's going to develop more self-esteem. And it's an infinite cycle until you reach the summit of Mount Everest if you want. Mm -hmm. I have a few notes there that I want to think about because I want to make sure I cover everything from the Toastmasters program. Actually, yes, I touched down on that at the very beginning. If you don't have feedback, then you keep on practicing. Practicing speaking in front of an audience. And one day the butterflies don't show up that much anymore. And it's uncomfortable. <coughs> But how do you measure whether you, you actually improved? Do you just kind of tell it to yourself, oh, I'm so good at this now, I'm scared anymore? No, you have to consider the audience. You have to have a measurable way of looking at your growth and how much you have improved. Mm -hmm. yeah. The evaluator is three oh. people with one. <laughs> Can you see that? <laughs> the evaluator is actually three people with one. It's a motivator, a counselor, and an evaluator. There's another, there's a, for lack of better words, there's another word for that. A motivator recognizes the improvement, recognizes the effort, makes the speaker realize that, yes, this was actually worth it for you to work on this. It's the praising part, the motivation part. The facilitator, which is when the speaker comes here and talks about what the speaker did well, what the speaker needs to improve on, the facilitator helps recognize the strengths and the weaknesses. And the counselor, all of you do this already, so many of you actually do this already. The counselor is here to help the speaker, the speaker has a special need. Maybe it's speech number three. And the speaker is a little bit scared and needs to have some confidence building. And the evaluator really needs to work with that person to have the speaker be more comfortable. It's counseling. Actually, there's a big responsibility for the 
team of the speaker and evaluator at every meeting should work together prior to the meeting to really prepare for the whole experience. That's what Toastmasters wants us to do, really. There are three ways to incorporate evaluation in the meeting. Here, we work on tell and sell. That means the prepared speech is being delivered and the evaluator comes in front and just evaluates. But in a lot of other meetings, a lot of other clubs, they also do the tell and listen and problem solving, which involves the speaker talking back, responding to what was said. And if there is an area of improvement that is very difficult to work on, the problem solving comes into place where there is a communication and a debate on how to solve it. Here, at Local Right on Toastmasters, we don't do the, two, the last two ones, but there's nothing that prevents you from talking to your evaluator at the end of the meeting or to any other senior audience to get some help. Maybe you want to know a little bit more and you really want to know how to improve. So please do this. All the new members who are not comfortable doing this at the end of the meeting, just want to talk to your evaluator if you have any concerns or if you want to say, hey, you didn't like it this way, but actually meant it to happen this way. And then we start talking. Very nice. The evaluation speech. When I started evaluating, which was really, really hard for me, it's very hard for a lot of people, I crafted my own evaluation form. Because the evaluation speech is actually a mini speech with an introduction a body and a conclusion. And in my evaluation form, I had the introduction had to tell about my general feeling, how I received the speech. Maybe because the topics mattered to me, maybe because of the presentation was upbeat, was funny. I'm going to tell my general feeling and of the presentation that I just heard. Then the body is going to talk about praising the, the good things that happened during the speech, praising the effort, praising the, the good aspects of the presentation, and then talking about the area of improvements. We have to use an Oreo cookie approach. That's what Toastmasters teaches us. First you talk about what went well, maybe you give two examples, then you talk about an area of, of, of improvement, and then you give a conclusion with one more area that went well, and a big conclusion sending the speaker back to wanting to do more, with words of encouragement. Evaluation with affection. 
if you want, most of you have raised children, I believe. If you want your child to improve, you don't want your child to be upset. You don't want your child to be scared. You don't want your child to feel bad. So you have to find ways to encourage your child to improve with words of encouragement. And it shouldn't be any different here at Toastmasters. Evaluation with affection. We don't want to make anybody feel bad. We want to be positive at all times. We want to build self-esteem. How do we build self-esteem? We are genuine. We are honest. We recognize the improvement. We talk about motivation. We use supportive language. We give positive directions. We give the tools on how to improve. We listen actively. We learn about the speech objectives. We get prepared and we get ready to do the number one value for the evaluator, the number one focus to help someone else. And the speakers have, resp the speakers have responsibilities too. I once gave an evaluation at the very beginning a few years ago and I was ready to help the speaker and it was supposed to be a humorous speech. It was part of a humorous speech uh, program. And I was ready to say how funny it was. I had prepared some old made sentences because I was so nervous. And the speech was not funny. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was really, was really not funny. And I didn't know how to handle it. And I gave a horrible environment. And I felt so bad. And I went to the speaker and I apologized profusely. And she was so gracious. She understood, she was a seasoned Toastmaster. I was brand new Toastmaster. But she made me feel that it was okay. It is a playground. <coughs> Just practice here. And we all are on the same boat and we help each other. And that's fine. So the speaker has responsibility to also work with the evaluator. Another thing that doesn't always happen is that you need to communicate your goals ahead of the, of the presentation. So the, the evaluator can really prepare for the evaluation, get comfortable with the objectives. The speaker needs to prepare diligently for the presentation. Empathize with the evaluator, I talked about this, and help the evaluator improve. It is okay, again, at the end of the meeting to say what you thought about the evaluation. And we're going to talk about this a bit later as well. And the speaker has to be prepared to change, which is another way of saying prepared to accept the feedback and incorporate some of the feedbacks in the growth path. The evaluator improves by deciding to change as well, recognizing the benefits of evaluating, put the change into action, make it, really, make it a habit, never stop improving. Evaluation we do at Toastmasters, evaluations, I'm sorry, we do at Toastmasters are good for the educational program. But that's what we do outside the club. That's what we do with our coworkers, that's what we do with our children, with our family, with our friends. If you are not used to evaluating outside of the club, you're, making a, you're missing a great opportunity to really be recognized by the people around you as someone whose opinion should be valued. It's amazing when you start working on at work, giving your opinion in a way Toastmasters teaches us to do it, suddenly people ask you more your opinion. And you actually create opportunities for yourself. The ripple effects of using good evaluation skills in your everyday life is just it's, it's infinite. I try I started to do this actually a few years ago myself with my children. I have teenagers and I don't I use my evaluation skills with them. And they don't get upset with me. They don't slam the door, they don't do all those things that I heard other parents talk about. Which is very nice. <laughs> So let's get started. <laughs> <laughs> this is what we're going to do. We're going to have three exercises, three presentations, three evaluations, and then three audience participants.
participations. We're going to do one speaker, one evaluator, audience participation. Another speaker, evaluation, evaluator, audience participation. I don't want to make sure that the, the evaluators are think, have their, their ideas all fresh so when they come and give their evaluation, they don't have the content of the other speeches in their head. So that's what we're going to do. As active listeners in the audience, you're going to fill out the form that you are used to, the evaluation form. And after the evaluation speech, I will ask the audience to participate in evaluating the speaker. I will also ask the audience to evaluate the evaluator. If you saw something that was done well, please stand up and let the evaluator and everybody know. So if you see something that needs improvement, please stand up and tell everybody as well. I gave a little form here, which is the evaluation contest guideline for the judges. It gives you an idea of what we're looking at in an evaluation. Analytical quality, recommendations, technique. You can look at that. You don't really have to do this now. It depends if you want to use it or not. But that's what we're going to do. 